What's up, guys? Going to take a little minute to talk about some of our sponsors for the show. One of the largest ferry supply stores in the world is stepping up for Forging Brains podcast to help you guys by sending you on your way with a cool gift when you use the code BRAINS at checkout. Wellshod carries so many different supplies throughout their warehouse that, honestly, we could probably do a whole podcast just talking about all the different supplies, tools, anvils, all sorts of products that they carry throughout their warehouse. It's insane. If you guys haven't been there, you should put it on the list to go check them out just to go see them, but also to go buy some stuff too. Their recent products they've been making in-house is anvils. They're producing the Scott anvils as well as the new Scott Eden's 200-pound anvil. I believe they've also been doing the Cliff Carroll anvils for some time as well. And John Harshbarger talked about that in his episode previously on Forging Brains Podcast. So when you guys go to order with Wellshod, either online or on the telephone, use code BRAINS and they'll hook you up with a free product in your order. And don't be afraid to let us know what that gift is. We're happy to be working with Wellshod because they are invested in this trade, the same as the rest of us. And not just there for profits and money. Plus, I don't know how you can beat that $10 flat shipping they always have. Like, that's insane. Can't get a better deal than that. So either call them up on the telephone or go online at www.wellshod.com. And when you go to check out on your order, use the code BRAINS and they'll hook you up with something cool in your order. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about working with Wellshod. This is going to be great. Uh, what's up, everyone? We got another episode of the Forging Brains podcast. We are actually in Ellensburg, Washington, preparing for the uh, FAS Fall Conference and Convention, where we have Craig Turnka as the judge and clinician. And we kind of figured it'd be a good idea to just sit around and do a podcast. We have an Airbnb outside of Thorpe where there's one, two, three, four, like 10 of us stand. So I'll just go around the table. We got Craig. Sitting here, we got Troy Wood, we got Jesse Wilson, Brian Stralo, Brandon Davis, Richard Puglisi, I believe, <laughs> Butch Whitaker, and Kid Kelly sitting down here. So we're going to have a lively bunch for this episode, so which might get a little rowdy from time to time, but <laughs> kind of also wanted to know, the question to ask Craig is, you just got done with Spruce Meadows. What were some of the highlights? about spruce well i think that probably the neatest thing about the whole deal is the fact that they were super super welcoming and they were like they were some of the best horses in the world but they it's like the wcb we've been punching around in the minor leagues for 17 years doing a lot of like out in the woods doing a lot of things so to get a shot at the big leagues yeah and go and do the, the world championship at a venue like that. Spruce Meadow people were Linda and her crew, Tom and Linda and Charlie, they, they're a huge, huge, huge asset to the horse community up there. And they, it's like Disneyland for horse owners. Is it more work uh, going into like beforehand, like getting ready for the world championship versus like one of your like individual contests, like say at in, like Edgewood? Is it more work having a good prepare for that? Yeah, because I think like like one of the things that that I got a little bit of negative feedback on was people thought that the money was going to actually wreck the camaraderie. Oh, really? So people are like, well, you know, there's this money up for grabs. So is that going to kill like? Like, and, and I think that that's been notorious no matter where you go. Is like people tell me all the time, they're like, well, that's really cool that Kid Kelly's going up against Brian Stralo, but yet then Kid Kelly strikes for Brian Stralo. And so, like, how does that work? And I'm like, well, everybody wants to see everybody do good, but it's right. like, are we going to, is that going to diminish and fall off as soon as you put $133,000 worth of prize money up? Yeah. Like, people would be slitting their throats. Yeah, and so, like, a lot of people thought the dynamic was going to be completely different, but I don't think it was. Kid, you went up there. Did you think it was any different? No. I mean, you know, I was just there for the Saturday, Sunday, and uh, so I didn't get to see a lot of the forging classes or the earlier rounds, but 
for the most part. I mean, Troy was there, and uh, I just saw guys like come. I mean, you came from out of the out of the country. You came from what Norway and Europe. Yeah, we had twelve countries. Uh, so so you had so many people coming in, and they were just. I mean, no kidding. Like, I don't know if this. I don't know if the money was the big thing, other than just You're trying surprised. to do your best. Yeah, like trying to do your best, and more well, incentive I mean, to do better. I got to watch the AFT team. I got to watch the WCB team. I got to watch. Unfortunately, I don't know the names of all the people from out of the countries, but like, no, I just watching the two days I was there. Nobody was. I mean, I thought everybody just. Put in their best effort because, and it was like it was like a, a really elevated WCB. Everybody just was there to compete, worked their butt off. What did you think? I thought it was great. I think people are going to try to win regardless. Yeah. Even if there's money or not. Right. It's just competitive nature. Yeah. Versus like, yeah. I think the title is just as much as the money, if anything. Was it? So you guys tried to do it in? Was it 2020? Right. And then, mm-hmm. or 2021. No, 2020. It was slated for 2020. She, so Linda Hethcott, she called, and, and we had, I'd gone up there and visited with their family and stuff, and, and she's like, well, I want to put on a world-class competition. competition. How, like, how does she hear about you guys? Do you even know that? I, I would think two things. One... Charlie is an aspiring farrier, and he said that he'd watched a bunch of our YouTube videos. Okay. And then Charlie is working for Marshall Isles, and Marshall knows of us. Of course, huh? And so I think that they wanted, they, they'd formulated a plan to put together the world championships. But did Marshall show up at all? During the yeah, he came. Yeah. 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 Bob? Yeah. Bob Marshall, Bob Marshall, Bob came. Marshall was there Saturday and Sunday. And so the first contest they ever had for the World Championships was in '79, and Bob Marshall is '79, and he was the first five-time winner of the World Championships at Calgary. Oh shit, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was real cool. Quick cussing, <laughs> cussing's allowed. Yeah. Damn it, <laughs> cussing's allowed. So you, how many times have you been like to Calgary in years past? Like how many times have you competed there? Man, that's a tough question. I would think I would think that I've probably been up there ten or eleven times. Yeah. So you I, may be like a little biased, like because you put on this competition this year. Like, do you think it compared to any times in the year past, or do you think it was better or ran better? Or well, I'm like biased a, because. What what we had the the luxury of doing is first off, Spruce Meadows is set up for premier show jumping. Okay, they're set up for the best of the best. Like right. they have like underneath the tent, you had Hans Meyer from from Switzerland, and then you had uh, the number two rider in the world watching him go from Switzerland. Oh, that's pretty cool. You see what I'm saying? So the, the dynamics were completely different. And so Calgary was more of a fair. Mm. Calgary was a state, like... A, like Calgary it's Stampede. A, it's the right. Stampede, which is it's the rodeo and everything. So, so we were like a side attraction. And I'm not saying that they didn't pull out all the stops, but it was completely different. It was a completely different atmosphere. I think at Spruce Meadows you had informed fans you had horse people you had more of a of a group of people who actually knew what horses and horseshoeing and and all that was about does that make sense yeah because i even had a client um she was up there at spruce and she saw you guys' first post that you guys were there and then she tagged me she's like this was the one you guys were telling me about and i was like yeah that's the one i was telling you about she's like oh my god i can't believe i'm actually here and i mean this is we were talking about this today but uh, my grandson and I were sitting, there was a little trotting track that goes from the barns out to where the, the international stadium is. Okay. And they walk in horses back and forth. And all of a sudden I see this horse coming up with these toe clips in the back that look like they're saddlebred clips. Monsters. They're monsters. And then it's got a little set toe with a toe clip in the front. And I, to- I said to that lady, I was just being sarcastic. I said, that's the best fucking horse sh- I've seen shot since I've been here. <laughs> and she goes, well, we got the best fucking farrier. 
And I said, who's that? She goes, Travis Coons. And I was like, well, I, by God, I bet you do have the best yeah. Yeah. And she was just a little sarcastic, and so was I. But it's like everything is connected. You know right. what I mean? It's like all those people are coming from all over the place. And, and that's what makes it different than the stampede. The stampede, there's people w waiting four hours to get a free pancake and a sausage for free pancake yeah. day, right? Yeah. This is... This is <laughs> well, shit. It's what true. Was the one day? It's true. What did they do the one day with the uh, like, like? I'm sorry, I don't know much. Six bar. Jump, the six bar. Jesus, <clears throat> crumbing at least. Like, holy fuck. Tall. Yeah. <laughs> two meters. Yeah. Two had meters. a horse jump two meters. They had like the That's record. The record Bodie. was was two two. I want to say like, two ten. Is Troy taller than Bodie? No. Yes. No. Yeah. It was. It was <laughs> almost seven foot. Right. God, it was like six, five. Yeah, jumped the damn rail, and it wasn't the only one. They had to jump progressively, right? So they jump. Yeah, like and then five last horse standing gets it, but the, but like if no one makes it, then it's everybody that was from the previous go round. They split the prize money. I think it's like a depot vaulting in my home yeah. country. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking. We're talking. It was like. And not only that is it's just it was just like Montana is just a state. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> what, what's the guy? It's like Alaska. What's the guy that uh, survived the what's the Leonardo DiCaprio movie and then the Oh the uh, uh, Remnant? What was yeah. It? yeah, what was that guy? I don't know his name. Come on! Alexa! Right. Alexa <laughs> <laughs> You know. So I mean, I'm pretty sure he was an American. So you just went up there to watch, right? Yes, 100%. Even I though, know. so was it worth just going up there to watch? It was very good. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Some um, Riley and I were talking about on the last week's episode, we're like, <coughs> we wish we would have just went there and watched, but we were kind of like on the fence about, eh. Don't be pussy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I think that's it. And I think that, like, like, there was almost a little bit of an undertow because people were like, well, you were going to... You were going to cap it at 85, how come you only got 65? And what we did is we, we thought that we would get more than 85. Uh -huh. So we had to put some stipulations on how you would, you would make it to where you told someone they could come and they couldn't come. And so you had to put a resume in there. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we said you had to put your resume in there, I think people thought, well, I'll never get in, so I'm not even going to try. But the reason we had people put their resume in is because... You can't just you can't just say well, I like you, so you get to come, and I don't like you, and you can't come. You gotta you gotta do it by have some sort resume. of accolades. Yeah, and so I think this first year was going to be kind of tough sledding as far as as far as like getting people all charged up. But I think I think it's off and running now. I think I think I think it was a great show. You guys are all set up for next year then as well. Yeah, I think I think Linda like we what they do is they have a think tank a few weeks after the event to see what they can and like what they wanted to change, what they want to do and stuff like that. And I think that, I think that we're going to be involved on that. And I, yeah, definitely, definitely. So we're already working on plans for next year. And it's like, it was like everybody, everybody was jacked up when they left. I thought, what did you guys learn from that contest to go for the next championships? Is there anything you would, it's a completely different contest. Like, like at the WCB contest, we promote people to come in and pick up the feet and look at the feet and this and that because we want people to learn. Like, the WCB is all about learning how to compete and learning how to do better. The, the World Championships, it's just a little bit like we can't let people just go in and run over the top of people and, and look at the feet and stuff like that. So we learn... And, and that's why I asked Tom Willoughby to help us with the stewarding. Is, is it's, there, There's just rules and you have to stay by the rules. You know what I mean? You can't just let people come in and do whatever they want. Did you, did you, is that what you kind of saw? Yeah, yeah, I think so. How, well, many, how many stewards did you have then? Like five. I, I knew it was going to be tough sledding, so we, we got like, and, and probably the one that took it the most hardest is, I know it'll never be a cop, is uh, Levi. 
<laughs> Levi hated it. Like he's like, they can't make people cry. Well, no, but he's like, he's like, got to be hard on people, and he's like, Dad, you're not hard. And I'm like, you don't understand, son. I'm oh the good God. cop. You're yeah. the bad cop. <laughs> I'm the one trying to pick people up. You're I'm the trying, one trying to give to... away free horseshoes yeah. and stuff, and yeah. ask me a question. You're the one supposed to be Billy clubbing them to death. That's <laughs> it. That's your job. We got to give you a Billy club because you're too small to do anything else. So did you guys have, were all the shoes like uh, open, like everybody could watch yeah, them? We, yeah, we, uh, they had uh, those little turnstile kind of separators and we, we didn't want, there's people who just wreck the open judging. Yeah, they can't help themselves. They can't help themselves. So we made a barricade to where you could watch the open judging, but you could not participate in the open yeah. judging. Yeah, I saw that on the uh, the sheet that said anybody that tries to influence the judge automatically results in disqualification. What is just trying to do their work? And you see that at the WCBs, and we try to, I try to make it to where people can see how they are doing good or they're not doing good, because that's the whole idea of learning. Mm -hmm. But when you get to that level, come on now. Yeah, yeah. Like just like there's a reason that you shouldn't go on a blind date. Is because you're thick. You don't know what can you're thick. <laughs> Cat was, was the stampede open or closed judging for this? Everything's you? closed judging. Yeah. So it's yeah. like I it's like conventions closed. And I think that it's a, it's pretty remarkable for people because it the light comes on when you can see your shoes. You're either in this spot or the, this is the reason they digress. Yeah. Did you find any like uh, downsides? Like, was there any issues that you guys had, like that you didn't necessarily uh, see coming? Like what yeah. kind of what kind of tequila was in the margarita machine next? Oh, to what was that? That was I got a couple bottles of it. That's good stuff, huh? That um, yeah, I got a couple. That, little that, of that they put a margarita stand right next to us. That's dangerous. It was dangerous. <laughs> it was like you know like, the coolest part. Like adult slushies. Troy, really? you can attest the uh, the tent, the trailer. It was not in the back parking lot. It was not behind Cooper's Barbecue. Oh, sorry, sorry. You have to. You're gonna have to edit that one out. We no, keep, but it was wrong. Really but dude, it was yeah. right in the middle. Front and center. It was, and people came by, and they 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 watched because what in the middle of the morning, ten o'clock, noon, one o'clock, there wasn't much going on. I mean, you hear, you see fire, and you hear banging. And next thing you know, you've got a crowd. And that was the coolest part that I thought about this. It week. was packed the whole time. Compared to, really? like, I mean, I'm always going to go back and say a Sheridan was always a cool facade just because people would come by and they had to go by the trailer yeah. to see it. So that was kind of like this, I thought. Like, they saw what was going on. And, like, watching the, the Sunday with the round of 10 and the round of 5. Yeah. Like, I mean... It was hard to find a spot where you could watch. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when you bring horses in. People, you know, well, you know, just, crazy. I mean, but even on Saturday when it was the, that was the, the specialty the forging. Specialty forging, yeah. I mean, even all those rounds, like everybody, like, kind of, like, and it was a cool, because, like, it was just a neat facade and, not facade, what's the word? You know, come on, help me out. Venue. Is it good? Yeah, you know, venue, mate. Venue. <laughs> hey, what, what were the shoes? Picked from the pool of shoes for the Freshly Forged. Well, that was the. Have you guys ever seen the, the movie Princess Bride? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, like, everything, like, pe like Bodhi competed, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, the whole time I'm trying to think about how to screw him on picking the shoes. And when I say that, he knows me the best, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm like, did he put the po poison in this glass? If he put the poison in this glass, he's going to think I put the poison in this glass. So then I'm not going to put it in that glass so I can put it in this glass. So the whole time I'm picking the shoes, I'm trying to make it to where no one knows what the shoes are. Yeah. Because I'm the only one that knows what the shoes because I have to cut the bar stock because I can't take... It would have cost me... It would have cost me... <laughs> that makes sense. It would have cost me like... Forty thousand dollars in bar stock yeah. to haul it all up there and say, because everybody's like, why don't you draw them out of a hat? And I was like, well, why don't you give me twenty thousand dollars for all the bar stock? I'm gonna need to pick it out of a hat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, I cut the bar stock, and then I, what we did is to keep it fair for everybody. Is basically you're going in a sacrificial first go. If if it would be just a who's who and you can do whatever you want, as soon as you pick the 
the shoes, the people who were going in the later rounds would just go off site, practice, yeah. and then come back when it was their go. So what we did is we didn't tell anybody that they were in the next round until we were almost done with the previous round. Oh. So they had to stick around yeah, to see if they yeah. were in the next, and that way, and then we said you couldn't compete, I mean, you couldn't practice right. on site. Yeah. And so that way we didn't throw the guys that were in the first round to the wolves. Right. Then it would actually be the best shoe making and the best plan. Yeah, that's the fairest way to do it. That was the only way I could think of doing it because it's like, and, and like, you just, what we have to do is not become to where we're biased. Right. And it's like, it's so easy to become biased. You know what I mean? Like, like. Especially in today's world. Troy's on our team. I would love for him to do good. But oh, yeah. the, the bottom line is is that as soon as you start thinking that way, you become biased. And it's sort of like because people are like, who are you going to get for judges next year? And I was like, well, we have to get two other countries regardless. Mm -hmm. you can't, you, we, we've already put Americans in the English in the judges list. So now the next year's... Scotland. Or they, yeah, they have to be some other country because you can, if you pick an American because we're an American country doing a venue in a Canadian country you can't just pick Americans the whole time I mean no. you can't you have to think outside the fact that you want to make it because I think it's cool when people come in they see that it was an American people putting it on in a Canadian venue and an Englishman won I think that that shows that that was like it yeah the, the winner won yeah, that's the best way to crown like a world champion and keep it legit. Without a doubt. Yeah. And so, so like, so that's why it was kind of funny because Bodie was like, he won the Italian Hind. Oh, did he? He's like, people. He told me he goes, people are gonna think that that I knew, and I was like, dude, I was trying like, like the, you either have a good go at something or not, and and I really don't care what people think at this point. You know what yeah. I mean? Either either Bodie's going to be a good hand or he's not going to be a good hand. Well, that was what day six, day yeah. five. Yeah, yeah. You, you start you, to get you, into the swing of things. You were kind of yeah. like, yeah. yeah, putting in the work. Yeah, but it was it. it I tell you what. I mean, and all BS aside, I'm just thankful that that Linda and Tom and Charlie gave us a shot at that. And we, everybody that went to the contest acted like they wanted the contest to be a success. I think that more people wanted the contest to be a success so we have a world championship bring it back. than people were nitty gritty and wanted to just be world champion. Do you agree with that? I do, yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. You know, kind of like a thought that goes through my head is like, thinking about that contest is like, obviously the guys that won it, like Matt Randall's and like the top five, like me knowing me is like, I know like there's no way I'm going to be able to like compete with those guys and, you know, place amongst them. So it's like, do I necessarily want to like put myself out there and try to do it? But for guys like me that don't necessarily think that they're able to, but is it inviting and worth it to just go up there and watch? What and do hang you think? Because that, like you're the rookie in the whole you've traveled abroad and what do you think yeah i think it'd be worth it but i think it would also be worth it to try to throw your hat in the ring too and just do it because you need to know where you stand if yeah. you want to compete with them <laughs> yeah whether you're <coughs> yeah at the bottom or in the midst or well and it's not just a one-year journey yeah i think like like for the people that came from europe i think that this year they had to come and see how the trailer worked oh you see what I'm saying? They yeah. they have to see the landscape, mm -hmm. and then next year they're gonna see this, and and that's what I told Bodie because Bodie didn't want to compete. He, Bodie, we had to talk him into competing, and the reason being is it's like, and I use him as an example because it's just like he worries a lot about what people think, and I'm like I, but we, the world championship we did treat different than the WCB like, Bodie is is like an integral part of everything, right? Mm -hmm. And so like. Levi ran the time clock. Levi did everything. We picked the judges. We picked the shoes with independent of Bodie because I, I like him. Because if he wins it, he wins it. If he doesn't, he's going to be like 65 other competitors that didn't. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The chances of you winning are going to be hard. Yeah. But having said that, I was like, Bodie, if you're going to go and do good, and this is from my personal experiences of winning at one time, is you have to go 
and you have to see the mood. Mm -hmm. You have to see what the atmosphere is. You have to you have to you have to visualize that green bank of grass on the one side of the trailer. You have to have it all in your head to go and visualize and see the wind. And you can't just go and be like, I think I'm ready to kick somebody's ass now yeah. and go. I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're never gonna get to that place until you actually put forth the effort. Uh, exactly. And get there. I see. What and you're I saying. think I think like Troy, if he wouldn't have gone this year, he did just been that further behind for next yeah, year. I yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. And so now you know, you like you already know how to get your because part of that is getting psyched up. Like if you've been to the Edgewood contest several times, you're like, I already know how this is gonna go. So I already the, know the and pace you, is different. You already know how it all is gonna lay out. And if you yeah. can't see that in your mind, then how could you even begin? Yeah, then you're a duck out of the water. And that happened to the Spaniards. The Spaniards came and things were so different and they got discombobulated. But now that they've gone and they got discombobulated and everything was like, didn't happen exactly how they wanted to, I think they'll be a force to be reckoned with next year. Was he, was the person that let, uh, won the first class, was he a Spaniard? Yeah. Yeah. That's Sergio. I was, I seen that name and I was like, I've never even heard of this guy before. But Yeah, it was uh, cool. Was it was very cool. Don't yeah. worry. They don't know who you are either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not listening unless you got <laughs> subtitles. <Yeah. laughs> In Espanol. <laughs> they know Jesse, but Jesse, you know, I mean, he's been talking so much. Yeah. It's been kind of hard to get in. Make sure you in. tell my Basque family hello, Sergio. <laughs> Brought to you by the World Championship Blacksmiths. We're so excited to have the Trinka family support what we're doing here. It is a huge part of the topics that we have on this podcast, and it's where we've gained a lot of community at. And exactly what they are. They are a community that supports education through competition. So if you were looking for a support system behind you on your journey of becoming a better farrier, go join up and go to an event. You will never regret it. And they've been nice enough to offer us a 10% off on their online store or call in orders for everything besides competitions and membership. So go ahead them up, get some merch, and let some people know what you support. Thank you, guys. Barrier Box. First of all, we owe Fairy Box a huge thank you for being one of the first ones to jump on and support what we're doing here with the podcast. If you haven't heard about Fairy Box, it's a bi-monthly box that comes to your door and it's filled with goods, kind of like the Chewy Box to your dogs, but this one's not filled with crap. She gets advice from the top guys of the industry and puts together a box. With Hard to get an Edgewood in wise. You know. <laughs> well, I might have to try and put that on the list for next year then. Oh, and I think that I think that you guys could have, like, I think that Brian Mullins, with his podcast, he was, he, he, inter there's just tons of people to interview. You guys could have interviewed tons of people. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that was also kind of another reason why we wanted to go up there and, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. just be face to face and doing it like oh, we're doing right now. Man, it was just a the golden opportunity you missed. Yeah, it was a target rich oh, environment, yeah. that's for sure. Oh, but now we know. Exactly. <laughs> now we know. But like, so as as doing a podcast and and doing the interview stuff, interviewing. I mean, I've everybody here, everybody in this side, other than this guy, has been on the podcast. So you guys have been in the interview world. Like, it, it, uh, what is it the Winter Clinic in Amarillo? Yep. You know, and a bunch of them where you you stop and you're like, hey, let's go in here. Like for me. It was just cool going up and watching because I've been to a number. Every, I mean, I don't know how many WCBs you've been to. I don't. I don't know how many, but like that Calgary deal, no kidding. Like, you didn't pull up next to the trailer and park your shit next to it and no, I mean, bust your tools out. And but it was like when I walked into that facility, I was like, oh shit. But yeah. I saw the truck with the you know, the wrap on it. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going right there. And it was just, it, it was a different competition. Well, because I think that's a different place. And I think that, I think that what people have to understand that have never been there is that, and I'm not just saying this because we went up there, but it's, if you're a horse person, that's a bucket list place. Yeah. But you could, you could, uh, you could look at it like the Super Bowl, and where you've got people with a microphone in front of your face. And that was just a cool deal to just watch. Yeah. Yeah. I got to watch you, Bodie, Levi, Christine, um, in the family. I got to see Bob Marshall, um, you know, Ian Rich. There was a bunch I of people there. I got to see 
I got to see a lot of people, Todd Walker, Austin Edens. I mean, I got to see a bunch of people that I haven't seen in two or three years. I know. It was, it was and, cool. And it was just good to see some folks and, and you know, get that little, little, little bit Spark. of that little fucking sugar candy you get in a straw that you kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, <laughs> shit, nothing like a little bit of squirt every once in a while to just get you happy again. Meth. Yeah, oh, is that what it is? Ah, we got that coming from you know somewhere. Yeah, come on. But like that was a good, but it was different. It wasn't a WCB. No, it wasn't. And and yet it was still like I don't know if it'd be like a good place to go and do like you could do interviews, hundred percent. But like it was just cool to just watch. Yeah, it was cool to watch. I certainly cool felt to, like, like I missed handshakes that. from people. It was cool to handshake other people and go like, hey, nice to meet you. And that was, and then just to look at the facility, holy crap. Yeah. Like, sounds like I mean, it's top notch. Yeah. yeah. So, so what was the prize money again for the World Championships? You guys gave it? One out? billion. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was 133,000. It was 75 to the winner, 25 to, to second place. And it worked its way down, and then like everybody that was in the top ten got at least three grand, right? Mm -hmm. And then it, 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 she wanted to make sure that everybody like got something for coming. Like she she wanted to recognize everybody's effort to come in internationally. So then she paid day money. Oh really? Nice. And so I got to feel like Oprah Winfrey for one day. <laughs> you get a car. You get a car. Check under your seat. Check under your seat. New yeah, car. And, then, and so she gave every competitor a thousand dollars. That's cool. Mm. Every so, competitor got Canadian, Canadian though. Yeah, but still. <laughs> so this partner, you got your entropy almost back. Exactly. Wow. wow. Fuck, I would have known that. <laughs> I, think, I, think everybody, I think everybody's probably thinking that. Oh, oh, it was pretty gracious. Yeah, yeah. Super no, that's gracious. super cool. I would never have expected that or thought that. No, that's cool. Oh, no, over the top. Yeah, it was yeah. like they were that way the whole way. Like everybody's lanyards got you into like VIP stuff. Like mm -hmm. you could go, like you could go into the riders' lounge, which is. So the, where the riders get to actually watch the goes is a glassed off little terraced bar that you could just go in. It, it was like, basically you got VIP access. She made a, a VIP blacksmith lounge. No kidding. Yeah, where like you I'm don't get her for that next year just so I can do that. I'm not going to compete though. Well, exactly. well, you got Sorry, I'm going to forget my, my toolbox. Get this, no. you rode okay. the road. I'm just going to show up. Yeah. There's a whittling station. One of them guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, but exactly I think Troy, Troy was the one, only one here that competed. Like as far as a competition, it was uh, other than being like a team one where it's all horseshoeing and making shoes. Like you had to do forging competitions. Plus, there was a lot more of the shoeing, like the on the That's horse. What, that was the goal. Was that to, was cool as heck. What I thought when I saw the there was four. You know, there was yeah. basically four goes so of horseshoe. I'd yeah. be curious to see what Troy thought about that in the sense of like it was it was horseshoeing versus just who can practice the most and make a shoe. Like how you know who's mm -hmm. who's who can measure feet better. Who can get a fit on a foot better. I mean, well, did you feel like like and I mean. This is what, did you feel like it was a bigger stage than the WCB? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I thought one of the really cool things was it all came back to basics. Like the time limits didn't let you go down the rabbit hole. When yeah. you made a mistake, it showed mm -hmm. at the end. What was the time limits for this? 60. So 60 minutes shoe for a specimen. shoe on the foot and a specimen. Wow. And wasn't there a pairs class too? Yeah, there, there was a shoe there was pair. A, well, the, the top 10 was shoe a pair in the top yeah. five. So. Yeah. Basically, you're not going to go down any rabbit hole without no. You're going to make a shoe and hopefully it fits. And if, if it doesn't, you Fun. you don't do good. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, that'd be nerve wracking. <laughs> and so we said no plates and no, no plates and no shoes on the floor. We didn't want you to have any plates or shoes. So, so you oh, can't use any templates. You can't, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So I think that 
in my personal opinion, I think that's where where a lot of guys got waxed was when the English and the European came over, they all have their little black book. Mm -hmm. So when they measured their foot, they looked in their little black book and they knew exactly how much they wanted to cut. Yeah. And it was like, it was like, it, it, you could see a big difference. It helped them. Uh, heck yeah. 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 I've heard a couple <laughs> guys like Ben Yeager, he talks about that. He's got his little book and yeah. preaches about it every because time. Because we goes. would want to be, get going. We're like, hey, we're going in five minutes. They're like, I haven't even looked in my book yet. Just and you're like, I don't really care. You know, <laughs> you know? we got a schedule. <laughs> Americans, we don't read it. Yeah. 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 We're not even on the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. No, that's cool. So, uh, I remember when we were in Edgewood, just to kind of like change gears a little bit, you were kind of telling me a little bit, you guys have acquired like a piece of property nearby and you wanted to set up a WCB headquarters. And from what you were telling us when we were just sitting around, like, sounds pretty damn cool. Like, what you guys kind of have in the works. I don't know what you want to necessarily, like, let yeah. on about, like, to the public versus, like... No, no, it's all open. It's all a dream. It's a dream. But I think that we get closer and closer. And, and so what we did is there's seven and a half acres just north of us. Mm -hmm. It's adjoining our property. Mm -hmm. We bought the seven and a half acres and... What we want to do is build a national smithy. Okay. Not a school. Everybody's like, oh, a school. And I'm like, no, a school. Butch has got to school you some yeah. bitch. Don't be trying yeah. to take his name. I Idaho, Idaho <laughs> school of horseshoeing, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what was that again, Butch? Due West. <laughs> Due West. <laughs> <laughs> but south. but so. A little bit south, a little bit, you know. So, so basically, I'm. I've traveled all over the world and I, I think it's a shame that like we're considered like a huge market in the farrier industry. Like 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 when when corporate companies the American market, North American market is a big market, right? Mm -hmm. Well mm -hmm. I think it's a shame that we have one of the biggest markets in the world, but we don't even have a national smithy. No, we don't. So we don't have like so if Gavin Cooper makes something cool in an auction, it usually goes and hangs in a corporate office that somebody's not necessarily going to see and appreciate. And so, like, I was like, we need to have something. And, like, Lee Lyles, it, it, he had the, the Horseshoe Museum, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it got dispersed and just auctioned off. Into Is that all what happened to it? Like, so yeah, just, and there's there, a little bit of it left. It was in, ardmore ish Yeah, it was Oklahoma, Oklahoma, wasn't it? Yeah, there, no. there's like a, a little bit of a museum right there off of I-40 in Oklahoma. He had that cross okay. with all the anvils. Like, yes. I mean, that was a crazy... Like, so basically, we want to build a cathedral, a shrine, a shrine to... Don't you have the, the two fairy. balls, the two metal balls that go clang, clang? Exactly. Clang, 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 clang. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do, kid. <laughs> because, kid, you know, what you forgot is when oh, your wait, name I'll is spelled you. backwards, it's dick. All right? I'll, get <laughs> I'll get you. Hey, you can go to Anaconda, Montana, <laughs> and there's a big old Peter of the Pentlers there. <laughs> we'll roll your big old steel balls next to it. <laughs> Now you stole my thunder, Gavin, so I don't even want to talk. Hey, oh, look up Peter kid. the Pillars. Hey, where's uh, Joe Rogan's little guy that's like back there somewhere? <laughs> hey, look up fucking Peter the Pillars. We don't got that around here. We're not that fancy. Yeah. <laughs> well, Butt Montana, Butte Montana's got the asshole of the world, so Anaconda was jealous, so they had the big smokestack for the smelter, and it was just a big, big smokestack. Chimney. Straight up. Yep. Cool. And it was they real phallic looking. Yeah. And, oh yeah, and it's, it's the Peter <laughs> of the Pentlers. Peter the Pentlers. Yeah. Huh? Oh, that's because Butte's got Lady of the Rockies. You know, we'd hate to desecrate her. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this man, he's on fire tonight. <laughs> he's on fire. He's on fire. I, I so, remember the cathedral. The so cathedral. Craig, how, Craig how, is gonna he's gonna make a cathedral. Yeah. How how big Jesus is that? Christ, I just want a place to come drink a beer. Yeah, well, like I was talking to Chad, and Chad's like, once you give an idea to Chad, then he just kind of multiplies it. it and multiplies. And he goes, all right, Craig, you have to build this building. You have to think in terms that in three years your building's gonna be too small. Oh wow! Like, wow. All right, so so we're gonna shoot for eighty by two twenty five. 
there's going to be a, a clean side and a dirty side. The dirty side will obviously be the shop and everything, and, and it's going to be big enough to where on the dirty side we could back the semi in. Okay. And so, we're going to have eight, eight double for, uh, forges, so four double forges on one side, door, four double forges, so there'll be 16 forges in there. Two cross towers. In the building. Yeah, in the building. Without the truck. Without the truck. Then when you put, put the truck in there, then we would have, we would have 26. 26. 26 forges so like so basically to get the shell done you'd have the the dirty side which is the shop and i have a balcony all the way around the top and that would basically be what i would think would be like the walk of fame like everything that we think is important in our industry would be around the outside and then have a, a stairwell going up and then on the clean side on the top you would have a lecture hall that you could probably seat between 250 and 300 people in the lecture hall. Then down below, you would have four dorm rooms mm -hmm. that are connected by a bathroom. And so that way you had enough room for 16 people. To come come and stay for an extended period of time exactly. if they wanted to. And then, a, then a, a, like a kitchen with a washer and a dryer and like a giant, I envision a giant oak table that could seat 40 people you know what i'm saying that yeah. sits in sit the, around doing what we're doing right exactly, now exactly exactly what we're doing because wait what's wrong with nelga hide well because that's for judging oh okay. Okay. Is that for judging. only it's judging? only for judging because oh, okay. everybody okay. knows that Naga hide is <laughs> it doesn't affect the well not as not as are almost extinct i know in south dakota I'm because basically i thought you had a market them. on them though well no because volvo made a truck that could run over nagas and oh, so because okay. nagas have killed <laughs> thousands and you sit in the middle of the middle instead of on one side of the other yeah, well, 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 when you're in sweden <laughs> these nagas just run around carelessly frolicking when they're in their mating season and people run into them and they do a head on and next thing you know people are dying and people don't even understand what naga is three sort square of like inches salisbury steak then you've got sirloin and then there's naga sirloin yeah, yeah. sirloin's sir right there in the black sir angus sirloin yeah sir sir black <laughs> angus sirloin <laughs> So very Do you guys get anything other than Coriani in New Mexico? Or? No. <laughs> Just because you can see their ribs hey, doesn't mean it's not you good. Know, right? you, can get, you can get better beef. You can get exactly. better beef. This isn't going to be one of the chicken beef things, all right? <laughs> this is not your turn, Butch. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, table? No, go ahead. All right, Naga hide table. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't even know what Naga hide is. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, oh it's my God! Like, it's like, oh, like, if you yeah. haven't been there to the, you know. have you not seen that one dude that used to do the rich Corinthian leather? What was his name? The guy Ricardo Montalban that was on Fantasy Island. The plane boss, the plane. You know no. what it was like? <laughs> Never. Man, now I'm showing my age. <laughs> yeah. You guys never watched I mean, Fantasy she, Island with Tattoo? Gavin just graduated high school, what, three years ago? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Close. But, all right, so back on track. We're just, then we're going to make some RV hookups. And basically, I want to deck out the inside with cool people doing cool things and bring together all the genres of blacksmithing and all the genres of trades and so like 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 there's so many cool things that like let's just say jennifer horn she mm -hmm. does a lot of railings and stuff like that yeah wouldn't it be cool to have a jennifer horn clinic and then have actually the stuff that was made in the clinic be part of the railing absolutely yeah have and it, exactly because i shop. think that we're mm -hmm. all like as a group, we're as bad as bad to the bone you can get. So why wouldn't we make the inside of it and show it off? And show it off and make it super super cool and then do all the and I, I realized like my goal would be to get the forges in and have 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 people come see it and start believing in the dream that I see. You yeah, know what I mean? And then with you describing like having people build with it like they're going to yes. have to see that and want to like contribute exactly. their time and effort into it exactly. as well. You know? And that's what I see because I don't think that we have a home as far as like, we're always like, 
And I, I'm not knocking it because I think it's a great addition, but it's sort of like when you come up here, you got the Foz trailer, right? Yep. But there's really not a Foz building or a Foz home. No. And as soon as someone peters out and they don't, they like you have a new president and they don't feel like doing something with that trailer, it seems like the dream dies. It starts falling apart. And it's like, but to have something, I want to have a brick and mortar building <clears throat> that like, Hopefully, someone will be say, "Well, Craig is falling off quite a bit. We want we want to take that over." That's yeah. what that's what I first foresee. Well, isn't uh... how do we make that happen today? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I think off Craig's falling. Yeah. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, <laughs> sons of bitches, they got me. <laughs> isn't that what? Uh, so with the AFA, uh, like they lost their lease of their building, right? Is that what? So, right. So what is it? The building? So the place that they had rented or leased for, for years, years, right? That, that building is being demolished as part of a construction project. So, so they, the AFA is now building a brick and mortar, right? No. So they move to like a corporate office space. Right, so you have to edit this shit because I was trying to promote a little bit of like, hey, you know, we do have other people trying to do other shit than other just the cool people. I'd say the dream is. This. For them to have their own property that they own. Well, when, whenever I was president, that was the goal. I always, I thought, and people would just say, well, Craig, you just want to practice palace. You just want to have, yeah, that, those things I do want to have. But what I think is sad and we have to really get a grip on is that I believe an anvil is still a, an important part of equipment that you need to shoe horses. Yeah, you can't do it without it, essentially. I think there's a lot of people I mean, who can, think they can. Uh, you can, but... You know, there's, a, there's a guy in my area that thinks that you can. You guys yeah. are still using him. He has <laughs> he has no anvil. He has four grinders on his trailer, and he trims with uh, Dewalt. Oh yeah, Dewalt grinder. And it was a brand new, beautiful brand new Stonewall. I said, "Where's your four? She says, "I took it out so I can put in another grinder." And <laughs> it just trips me out because I hadn't seen that before. I like the idea of being able to. You know, you're coming together with somebody, say, from the East Coast, and you guys are all coming here, and you have, like, a place to get together. And, you know, not, whether you're practicing for a contest coming up or you just want to collab together and, say, build something for... And, and yeah, why can't you just come together, yeah. too? And it, it doesn't have to be... Like, I'm not saying that we have to do horseshoeing clinics in there. You could do knife making. You could do... You could... You, I, I, and I know that this sounds funny, but you could do... How to make a podcast clinic. You could do yeah. anything. We'd probably have to get somebody better than there. Do you know anybody <laughs> else how to do that? <laughs> Not really. But, oh, but you know what I mean? It's endless. It's endless yeah. what you can do. And I think that like we could be like anything from I wanna have a power hammer in there. I wanna have I, I wanna have like part of the room is designated for grinder stations. So like if you did like let's just say you were gonna do any kind of a clinic you could actually have to where a person was set up and it didn't have to be makeshift. You know yeah. what I mean? You didn't have to be like, all right, well, we'll try and do this or do that. And I think that it's, it's definitely one of those things where if you have some dorms in there and you make it to where, like, it's not going to be free, but I'm no. just saying, like, if it was $60 a night and you could use the refrigerator and the washer and the dryer, I don't see why That's people would cheaper than a Super 8 down the road. Exactly. Yeah. And you're going to get a lot more shit out of it. That's 60 bucks a night <laughs> include all the coke. And... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's just part of the WCB way. It's just to wreck shit <laughs> just to and give tear her. it up. You're a giver. Yeah, I'm a giver. <laughs> I like, I like Did that. Did you notice yeah. that Jesse yeah. piped up as soon as he thought that there was something free in yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> free coke. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be cut heavily. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a minute and talk about another one of our sponsors. Farrier Box. I know you guys probably don't need that Christmas morning feel in the middle of the summer no more, but let's talk about how this subscription-based service sets you up with the best of the best products each time you receive their box. Everything they send out is tested and used by elite farriers, so it gets that stamp of approval every time it reaches your do doorstep. I don't think there's anything else going on out there in the farrier world that's quite like farrier box at the moment so when you can get products each month every other month i guess that 
you're on the fence about getting, they'll send it to you, and you'll have it at your disposal. Plus, you know, it's going to be handy stuff, so stuff that you're going to use. There's not something I've had that I haven't used yet, but to get a discount, you use code BRAINS for 25% off your first month's order, and that's a pretty good deal if you ask me. Let's get back to it. Yeah. Do you have any like plans as to when this might get built or, well, or even started? No. Well, all right. So we, we bought the land last spring. And when I say we, we did a real estate contract and then we're going to have it paid off this month. That's pretty and sweet. then what we want to do is we did it. We did it at a really, really, really got a good deal where I'll be able to take a loan against the land itself to get a construction loan and get the building going. How long in your head have you been kind of thinking and dreaming of this idea? Like, has it been kind of been way back or just kind of something I, that's been just a So, so in? like you go, you go to Japan. Japan has a state-of-the-art home. They have a forge, a forge and... All, they have office buildings and everything. And so then you go to England, and England has Yorkshire, the Highlands. They have, they have all the, Stoneley, they have all these facilities. They have facilities, mm -hmm. facilities in which they facilitate horseshoeing functions. Right. And so you go to all over the world. Hell, the, the, the Swiss team has their own practice palace. Damn, well, that's cool. You know what <laughs> I mean? And so like, so What's then... That one like? What makes the palace? Have you it not seen bad. Coming it's to America? It's, it's trick. <laughs> they have their own page. Get on their page. It, it's a cool, it, it's like, huh. it's a tricked out nice deal. And, and so I guess what I'm saying is it's like, I just think that people don't think in those terms. So like, I think once we get it rolling to where when people come out, they're like, there's a lot of potential. And, and like, would I be butthurt if someone built another one? No, because I think that that just it's better. Is great or good. Exactly. Yeah. And so, so like I foresee if I can get my act together and, and it's funny, I have young kids like Troy, a lot of young kids, like, like my house, my house, my mortgage costs when we got it was $116,000. So, we, and, and so, so then I'm talking to like, a low, month? No, no. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I live in high rent district. Yeah, I got to think how many rooms that thing got. <laughs> Two and a half. You know, can't but, find nothing for that. Al. But Logan Salcedo, you know, he's like, that ain't nothing, man. He goes, he just flipped the house. And they're like, they're going to get into the millions. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, so I have these young kids that are young. And my son, like, bought a house. And then they're like, they got in the upwards of 550 in it. And you're like, you're like, so you have to take the lead from the youth and they're like, you got to invest. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't think it's going to be a throw of the dice and I'm going to lose my ass on it. I, because if I did, then I wouldn't even be sitting here talking to you right now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe in anything that we're doing. Right. So it's like, but I do believe it's not a school because a school is like, a school is like, this is what we teach. This is what we do. It's more like, I think it's just a, a palace to where you have you could have a function like, and I think that someone like Richard could say, Hey, you know what would be cool is that my buddy knows how to build forges. And so we're going to put together 15 forges. So you get 15 guys together and we put a workshop together where everybody leaves with a cabinet forge. Yeah. You know, like the, it's endless what you can do. You're telling me all You're these mostly ideas. Just copy Jews. I thought it was I think pretty a trick. Bunch of I think a it looked a little bit book. like West Coast Chopper and stuff on it. It looked <laughs> badass. I he think does build like two hundred thousand dollar race cars for a living at home. Well, it's pretty so obvious. So I went out and said, "Build me a square box," and he says, "Like we got to put it. a little razzmatazz <laughs> on it. We'll see the pictures when it's done." And I didn't know what it was going to look like. I thought it looked tricked out. Yeah, and Jesse helped a little bit because the fan had to get moved, and Brian contributed some photos. But no, it we just true. gave him a pile of photos and. That's what he came up with. Actually, I have pictures of years too. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. One of them's for sale if you want one. Yeah. Barrier Box. First of all, we owe Ferry Box a huge thank you for being one of the first ones to jump on and support what we're doing here with the podcast. If you haven't heard about Ferrier Box, it's a bi monthly box that comes to your door. 
and it's filled with goods, kind of like the chewy box of your dogs, but this one's not filled with crap. She gets advice from the top guys of the industry and puts together a box with a theme. They aren't just a bunch of random items. They always have something where like some pieces of bar stock to practice for an upcoming contest with the punch or the fuller that you can use and fits that shoe. It's a great deal. She also throws in items that you wouldn't think of like good soaps, things to take care of yourself, make your truck smell good. Get on Farrier Box and use code BRAINS to check out, and you're going to get 25% off your first box. <laughs> I need a bigger one now. So. Exactly. <laughs> you're coming up with all these ideas, and it's like, to me, it's like, how are we going to fit them all in one year? Or, like, how are we going to get the time to do it? But we also have, like, the rest of time to do it as well, you know? <laughs> well, I, 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 I like, all these ideas just sound like, just take a it's like puffy. Or Damn fucking! Like, I want to do all these things. Oh, man, like, I, all the I do. Oh. I do yeah. want to do all those things, and it's like you it's like, but <laughs> it, I think that that like there's so many things that we do got to get done, and it's like it's like it's if you can make it contagious, that the hopefully <clears throat> just someone else picks up the ball and runs with it. You know what I mean? And just, they're just like, all right, this is what I want to do next. And that's what, that's what I kind of, I look for. And that's kind of why I wanted to bring it up tonight. Cause it's like, I didn't know how many other people knew about your plans to do this. And I figured that if you're down to talk about it, like, so we, were, we were like, all right. So out. when we were seriously, like, we're like, all right, we're going to do this. Chris and I, she was like, well, is it the smartest thing in the world to do it in Edgewood, New Mexico? And we're like, well, the only way we could realistically do it is if we, there's no way we could like uproot, buy a house in Oklahoma or some high traffic area. Like, let's just say Seattle. And then we're going to try and make it there. We're, we're centrally located enough to where we're like, you know, we could do this at a lot more uh, dollar you know, dollar effective in Edgewood and they're, they're built a couple new hotels and it would be like one of those things where, where I think like right now we're very, very happy doing the winter clinic at, at John Harshbarger's because well he's, it's just, it's a good, it's a good venue. Is that a good time for a little, uh, yeah, do you want to stop? Deal? You want to do a promotional deal? Well shot. No, he just puts so him in there. Well <laughs> he shot. puts him in there, dumbass. Yeah, it ain't like we oh, did that. Oh, puts him in there, oh, dumbass. I'm going to the son of a bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the way the big world works there, kid. We all like surprises. How yeah. about, you know? Get yourself With a you gift. Get yourself a little gift. Rick, you mentioned that Edgewood you know? is a glowing town and that you're going to have a hall that could potentially seat two or three other people. When you're not doing blacksmith type events, would you be opening that to like the community you could book it for? Without a doubt, we were thinking the same yeah. thing. Is like, like, like right now they put the farmers market in a cul-de-sac somewhere. Right. And I was like, <laughs> you know, in the off season and stuff like that, or when we're not doing stuff, why wouldn't we let the farmers market go in there? And then, and and then my my wife, the one wall where oh, the mountains. Mm -hmm. She takes a lot of her sunset pictures and stuff like that. It's a beautiful view of the Sandias, and we wanted to make that almost all glass. Oh, and it's wow. like That'd where cool. the kitchen is would be all glass. And it's like I was telling the guys today, I was like, I know a couple of people who have taken stained glass classes and did the lead stained glass and stuff like that. Why, would, why couldn't we do a bunch of that as well? Yeah. So like a trades deal. Yeah. Not necessarily like... Plumbing, electrical, but like, I mean, like, man, artistic trades, like what we do, what everybody at this table does, not me or Gavin or anybody in Pacific, but like what we do is a trade, but it's artistic. Troy, yeah. artistic. I mean, without a doubt. Like, I mean, so like, that's what's crazy is about like, I mean, there's a lot of people that like what we're doing and, and we like what we're doing. Well, we're in a renaissance period right now. It's yeah. sort of like people that work with their hands and offer a, a, a service. Like, I don't know if you guys know it, but there's not a whole lot of people who want to work anymore. So, like, doing a service is, is like you, you go up a few blocks. Yeah. Yeah, but we're artistic. Like, I mean, holy crap. Like, autistic? Artistic. I don't need to get... <laughs> 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 That's bullshit. <laughs> That's 
pretty good. You take a piece of steel and and make it into something that fits an animal. It's no. way different than just, to, you know, I mean, and, and one thing I guess it'd be interesting to just like bullshit around the table as we're talking and Gavin can edit it out later, but like, you're all about this. I cannot, yeah, I don't, there will be no right edit. Some of this it. shit is not need to be heard around the world, but like, there's a lot of people that I'm glad they're shoeing horses because I don't want to shoe them motherfuckers. Yeah, I agree. So, it doesn't mean, but like, man, it is a unique group that's sitting here because we're all wanting to like drink the Kool Aid and get like get in there and get gritty. Yeah. And we want to learn more. We don't. We. It ain't about who. You know. I mean, I don't think it's the artistic side. It's like I want to make sure I'm doing the best job I can. Yeah. Like help so out as a whole. I want to do the best job I can with the knowledge I have at the moment. And if Craig's gonna, you know, allow us a facility, and, and there's other facilities you can go to, I mean, but like, that is an awesome deal. But like, how do you, I mean, shoot, I just struggle with uh, like being nice to the. That's why you live in Montana, people. though. I know, I don't have to deal with so much. Customer service. There's only like three a... horseshoers in Montana. It got me excited well, when actually, you were Cole telling McElroy me about it. moved to Idaho. So like, there's so many different options of things you can do, and like, from the things that I've been doing lately, like with the YouTube, and like the things that you were talking about, like I oh, was doing this clinic, that clinic, it's like, I think about that and it's like, man, it could be getting out there to even more people other than just the Without foot traffic coming through here. Like, Without a doubt. And I can't I wait. think that, like, like, like I'll talk to Tom Willoughby and, and like that, that's what is such a huge gift as far as like what a wonderful position I'm in is you get to hang around some ultimately badass people right so you got mm -hmm, sir. Tom Willoughby and you're like Tom I had I seen this I, I seen what I want to do for the the entrance way and he I'll start explaining and he's like oh 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 you know and he's like he then then like because he's a freak show as yeah, far as like what's it. in his head so then he's like I want to do this and I want it and I was like yeah and that but just creating that enthusiasm is way better than than just saying I will never do that right do it you know what i mean it's like and i'm like you've never really lived until you racked up your credit cards a couple times <laughs> you don't have to pay those every seven years it falls off there you go <laughs> okay I'm exactly the whole wells Jack. fargo no no what was it the the uh, western western union, union. Yeah. i'm doing that just get it done. <laughs> When you said earlier about like, you know, Chad was saying, uh, you know, when you think about size, build bigger. Did you ever think that the 10 Forge trailer was going to be too small? Did you ever think? No kidding. No. I, when that I, thing got unleashed, like everybody was like, oh my God, this is the baddest thing since sliced bread. And it's been too small. I want to take a moment to tell you guys about Wellshod. And not just that they carry every item you can think of from every brand, including from the little guys, you can get some Adam Farr punches, some Ben Sneer hammers. They pretty much got it all in the hard to beat $10 shipping. But I also want to take a moment to talk about John himself. You see the Wellshod name at pretty much every single contest that you go to. And not only that, you see John himself there supporting what we do and investing his time. Like John's even jumped in the competition in his ring himself at some of the WCB contests. That speaks huge to me. And it also speaks huge that John wanted to support what we're doing with the podcast. They've agreed that if you guys use brains at checkout, they're going to put a little mystery item in the box for you. So go ahead and support them, what they're doing, and it helps support us. Because in all, we're all just one community. Uh, not yet. Small for the last two goes. Holy nuts. Edgewood and Fort Worth is too small. Could you imagine, small, pulling, you a pup? And Could you imagine pulling a pup with another eight forges in it? Damn. Well, we used well, to we used to time the our entry based on what put we wanted to shoot in the live shooting. So you wait till the last week and then call in, in the last four days, depending on where you want to be. Oh no! I've entered everything at Edgewood because I almost didn't get into Edgewood or not Edgewood, Fort Madison. Worth. So I entered yeah. in Madison. I entered Edgewood and Fort Worth. I already tried to enter Madison. They won't let me sign up yet. She's got she's got a master plan. Yeah, she she's got some sort of master coming. plan. And she doesn't tell me. Hey, she says she's the entry Nazi. Kind of like a movie. Yeah. No soup, soup for you. <laughs> I think something else that's pretty cool is we asked the Mount Rushmore question. 
and it's something Riley and I have been chatting about, and you have been the most popular person that has been brought up, and I think we've got about like 15 or 20 guys, people that have said, Craig is on my list for the Mount Rushmore, and you know, just from some of the things you were saying tonight, I think it just kind of speaks to the person you are and what you give back to the trade and not only just the people. And I think that's why people have chosen you so much that you have influenced them in their lives. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. And I was kind of wondering, do you think there's any special reason why you might be considered on Mount Rushmore so much for people? Well, I think it's a huge honor, and I think it's like just this group of people. It's like, like Chris and I, like we literally after Fort Worth every year or wherever we've had the finals, we we're like, we ask Bodie and Levi, Rachel, everybody's part of the the deciding factor. Is like, can we do this another year? Mm -hmm. Can we do? Because it's a lot of work. Yeah. But but. What's really cool is the fact that that we're, I think we all come to the same conclusion and we're like, what else would we do? What else would we do? Yeah. And it's like, I think that I think that the people mean a lot to us. Like everybody, because this is the thing is like, and and you guys are gonna laugh and make fun of this, but I don't think that there's too many people that are horseshoers that are good horseshoers. The people that we like to hang out with that were really the cool kids in high school. We're really the cool kids. We're all stray dogs. Every one of us are stray dogs that we're like, we finally we're found out what like, we're gonna do. Oh, are we the <laughs> cool dude? Stray dog. Uh, <laughs> stray dog <laughs> forward. <Close> for <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I think that, that, like it's like, and then when everybody, like, like when they interview Keith Richards and, and uh, Mick Jagger, they're like, hey, you, you guys killed several band members. And they're like, yeah, because those guys were into drinking and drugs. And they're like, yeah, we did drinking and drugs, but we were always into the music. Yeah. And it's sort of like, I feel like people are like this or that. And we have people who come to get away from their wife. We have people who come to get away from their families. But they never stay very long because they're not in to... The making the horseshoes and doing what kids said about like there's a certain thing about all of us that like yeah we it, there'd be it's badass if you make a cool horseshoe but if you know you're getting it done right that's the that's that's I the ultimate the goal like if you think you're getting it done right that's the ultimate goal so i don't know i i'm flattered that people like but i think I think that we just, we just, it was time that we had a group like we have. Yeah. I think it was time that we had a group like the WCB. And I think it was time that, that you, you didn't, you're not supposed to be invited to the party. You're supposed to be able to come to the party and then you either fit in or you move on. But you don't have to be invited to the party. Well, yeah. you guys have built, like you're saying, a culture. And I, for me, I, this is my first year competing in the WCB. I was dumbfounded and I was mad at myself for why haven't I been here sooner? That's what a lot of people say. Like, why did it take me so long? And it's just everything that, like he's saying, you're the head of the snake that people are thankful for what you guys have all done. But it, that beyond that, it's just a group of people that are really fun to be around. Because there, I, there's people, and I, and I take pride in it, there's people that come to the contest that I know dislike me right down to the core, but I'm, I feel thankful. There's that, five at the table. Yeah, there, and, and I didn't want to say anything, Richard, because <laughs> there's nothing worse than, than a, an Italian telling me I fuck your name up every time I say it, and I just, you know. I'll get you there. <laughs> I'll, I'll coach you. But, but, like, you're allowed to come to the WCB and not like us. Because there's lots of people that you will like, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, I feel very, very happy that there's people that come. But for the most part, everybody does get along. The number one in. compliment we get from outside people is they're confused that, like, Butch is competing against you, but yet somehow you are striking for him in the next go. They're like, I don't understand that. I've never seen that in my life. Yeah. And that is the number one... It was the number one thing that was said when we were up at Calgary at Spruce Meadows. Is people would come up and they're like, so let me get this right. That guy's competing against that guy, but yet in the next round, that guy's 
He's striking it with that guy. What? How does that work? And it's like because you want to kill that other person right up until you're not in your go. Then you're rooting for that other person, and that's a strange yeah. dynamic dynamic that people don't quite understand. Do you agree with that? One hundred percent. It's just a competitive side in people, but there's also the camaraderie side. <clears throat> because no one wants to go to a comedy show and see someone not be funny. That'd be horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> when someone, yeah, when someone's up there and they're like they're diving, they're diving bad. Well, no one wants to see another competitor like, oh my god, this person's gonna suck, and we're gonna sit here and watch it. Yeah. No one wants. So people jump in. Mm -hmm. They try and curve it. Yep. It's a reality TV, so, though. Like when it comes to going across the pond, like Troy, have you been across the pond? No, not you yet. haven't been across the pond. Gavin, Anybody? Gavin, Gavin, Gavin has. has. Yep, you were on the apprentice team, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So when you go across the pond, acreage wise, size wise, like I mean, that's been the biggest thing is like when it comes to competition and and fair competitions. Period is like they have one every weekend. Like we have rodeos here, right? That's yeah. what has been said. So, like, to think about what you're doing on, on a scale, like, you've got the whole United States, Canada. I mean, when you blow, like, I mean, how the hell do you compare what you're doing to what Europe's doing? Because you got to drive three hours. Shit, to drive from Edgewood, to drive to Edgewood from Montana's, 14, 15 hours. Oh, I, when you I drove at 26. Like, and so, like, what is crazy is, is the WCB camaraderie has created, is, is created on this, this North American continent, probably even Mexico, I'm sure, at some point. So, like, we're talking North America. We're not talking just a European area. So, that's what I think is frustrating or is maybe overlooked. So, when you talk about how well you've done and how well the family you know unity is there but the size like the size of the landmass that you've encompassed well when i, when I went to england last year and talked at billy's deal and i said that the gps when you get what's funny is when you get on i-40 it says Stay straight for 1,456 miles <laughs> until you get to Greensboro, North Carolina, because you're on 40 the whole way. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. like, that's a long distance. <laughs> What's the point yeah. of my GPS? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> just stay on this road. Put a bungee cord on there and just... Stay. People don't realize how big now, it is. Now some mean. of those bottles I'm seeing on I-40 are yeah. making sense. You know, and, and I, you, you can't do, you couldn't do a WCB every weekend. No, you can't. But the thing is, the thing you is, you want what, to, you want to, but you couldn't. What I think is exciting about Calgary is that Troy got to meet a bunch of other twenty-somethings from England and from Europe mm -hmm. that you probably wouldn't have met. Mm -hmm. You agree? I agree. And so, and a bunch of twenty-somethings from England got to meet Dylan Crane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they'd never met Dylan because. And I'm still bitter about this, and I'm just going to say it right now, is that we don't get an invitation to Stonely. Oh, the WCB yeah. team. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, and they're missing out. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that they would benefit, but we're missing out, because it's not about winning, it's about the struggle and the journey. Yeah. And so it's like, it makes me mad. And so I told them 20-somethings. We were in the top 10, and I don't know if Troy was sitting there or not, but there was a bunch of young kids from England sitting there, a bunch of them. And I said... Thank God you guys aren't dicks like those guys that are in the craft committee over there in Stonely because they won't let us come. And they're like, they looked at me all horrified. I was like, but, but you see, you get to see, you get to hang out with everybody. It's all inclusive. And you can't make a contest great on exclusive, exclusivity, yeah. right? Yeah. When you exclude people. Right. It's funny that you mentioned the 20-somethings because Butch has a class of 10 right now. And only two of them are over the age of 21. That's what I mean. That's that's cool. That's I think that that's awesome. That's super cool. Me and Jesse were talking about the other day and about trade schools. You mentioned <laughs> trades and not necessarily having horseshoeing in trade schools, but having the conversation and exposing to kids that, I mean, I didn't start learning to shoot horses until I was 38. Nobody told me at 16, 17, 18 
Like Toy figured exactly. out, hey, this is something I could go do. And this is a realistic thing that people can actually make a living doing. I just feel bad for Butch. <laughs> So you got 20 kids that... No, he's ten. got 10. ten. The most we accept and in one eight, term is eight, 10. And 8 are under, under the age of 20, math. actually. Oh, that math good. got a little complicated for him. Yeah, <laughs> 10 <laughs> under 21. Yeah, so you got, we got these. Got here, <laughs> Craig. Yeah. Why I cut off at 10 is I got no more fingers, and I'm not very good Get at Get the soft those. tape out. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, anybody got any blue juice? <laughs> well, on that note, I appreciate you guys all sitting down with us. Um... It's pretty cool to hear about Spruce Meadows being that I wasn't there personally. I had to watch through this social media and stuff. So thanks for sitting down with us and chatting with us. And uh, we will probably see you there next year. Well, I hope so. I hope people want to go because I think it was an, I think that they, they've made an incredible opportunity. And I think that everybody sees the wealth in it bringing, like I say, with Troy and, and the younger kids going. I think it makes them so much more experienced, don't you? Yeah, I agree. It's the next generation coming in anyways. Yeah. And that's the whole thing is everybody acts like you have to supersede somebody else. And I think that you just have to, if you can get it at a younger age, then you don't get worn out when you get older. Right. If someone can learn, like you're doing it when you're 38, if someone can do it when they're 18 years old, they can use, they can do it simpler, more efficient, and more easily done if they can do that at a younger age. You mean then, less back pain? Yeah, well, he doesn't have any, do you? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember yeah. when I was in college, like I was 18 years old, and then there were some other guys. One guy was like 38, and then another one who was 50, and another one was 40. And I think of the brain like a sponge, you know, like, and then there's a learning curve. So when we're 18 years old, we're able to absorb everything a lot easier we than the guy about. that has the brain that's at say 38, I'm not necessarily saying you, but from our, my experience there, like I noticed like a person like me at 18, I was able to just, I had no experience whatsoever, like shoeing horses at all, but I was able to just like to supersede him much more faster. Like Without just because like, like the learning curve is just kind of like I going down. I think that's down. just, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Whether it's horseshoeing or anything in the world, but yeah. Well, on that note, I reckon we will stop cool. the podcast and thanks, we will, uh, well, thanks for having us on man yep. thanks, yeah. Gav. appreciate thanks. you guys thank you you're so cool you're my hero <laughs> we're not edit <laughs> editing nothing out kid yeah, yeah. so, did, <laughs> so did, did, uh... i want to take a moment and talk about our sponsor world championship blacksmiths ultimately they are a business but their model is based upon help each and every one of you find and strive for the goals you set upon yourselves that most of us desperately need not only do they provide the competition aspect, they bring a community of people together that will have your back no matter what. So sign up for a contest and work towards those goals that you set for yourself. And you can also use code BRAINS in their online store for 10% off any merchandise. It's not including membership or contest fees. So go to www.worldchampionshipblacksmiths.com and use code BRAINS and buy yourself some merch. Thanks everyone.